Well, Field Day is a tremendous opportunity to share all the good work that the Strawberry Center and the, and the Strawberry Commission is doing in this private-public partnership between Cal Poly and the, and the strawberry industry. Today we're going over the Ligus bug vacuum and spray rig optimization. So you can see out here we have the conventional system that's widely used in our industry and we have the new system which actually was developed by Cal Poly, Cal Poly Strawberry Center. We had a team of students and professors work on it for about a year or so and we were able to increase the efficiency of the conventional by over two times, which to us was really great. You know, Ligus is about a $200 million issue to the California industry a year. So being able to remove twice as many ligus as what can be done now is just great for the growers. We also have work in the spray rig, uh, spray rig optimization. We're doing some basic recommendations, things that growers really can uh, follow simply. Essentially, if you could just fly the spray booms at canopy level or under canopy level, you can actually increase coverage what we've seen roughly about 30%. Uh, and if you maintain and calibrate the system, uh, you get more distribution uniformity and general overall increase in coverage. I spoke about uh, Botrytis gray mold. I do two research trials looking at fungicide efficacy for Botrytis, and that's what I presented on. Uh, this year we do two a year, and I uh, was fortunate enough to finish both the trials become field day. And um, also we generated a graph to uh, help the growers um, rotate their frat codes. It, it's an efficacy rating of different fungicides with resistance. So you could look at the chart and um, determine you know, what is more effective and what may, re may be resistant. Here we tested about 84 cultivars and breeding line and experimental line from six different breeding programs. We test them against Macrofemina, which is one of the major soilborne issue for strawberry industry. We test them to see how resistant are the plants, and some plants show really good resistance that people can use that for their, I mean, their farming. But the main goal is breeding program use these sources of resistance to cross them with their variety, with their experimental variety to transfer resistance to these new cultivars that they release. And as you can see, the UC Davis recently released five new varieties that have some level of resistance to these major soil-borne diseases. And we had the four cultivars, so we used that, we looked at Albion, Monterey, San Andreas, and a propriety variety. And, um, so some of the main results we've been finding is that the effect of cultivar on yield is, is much larger. We don't see any significant differences between the different pre-plant fertilizer treatments on the yield. So that means that we can safely not apply that controlled release fertilizer or substitute it with compost without having a yield penalty. And if you fill out some paperwork with the CDFA, you could even get the current payment rate is $35 per dry ton of compost so you could get paid for applying your compost to your field. It's all about trying to improve the production and the return uh, on capital employed for these growers. I mean, they've got a tremendous amount of money invested in producing strawberries, and California produces 85% of the strawberries for the country, and when you have that, and you have these things going right here at Cal Poly, we're, we're right in the center. We're right in the center of, of uh, all the strawberry industry from Watsonville to Oxnard. And, and south. We're, Cal Poly is right in the center of it. So it's a wonderful place to do this research, walk right out in the fields, and to be able to do the things that help, help these uh, producers. Mm -hmm.